A recent report estimates about a billion security cameras rolling worldwide, 18% of them here in the United States, like at this ATM. Every time you do your banking, you're caught on camera. But you don't have to be using a service like that in order to be caught on camera. In fact, just walking down the street, you can be captured on closed circuit TV. The U.S. is second only to China when it comes to keeping eyes on its citizens. Make no mistake, Big Brother is watching. According to safety.com, the average American is caught on camera 238 times each week. Wow. <laughs> It surprises me and it feels a bit weird to, to think about that. Concerning at all? No, I just think it keeps people safer than it doesn't. And if you don't wanna be doing something that shouldn't be recorded, don't do it. Here's how those 238 camera views rack up. Cameras capture you at home or in your neighborhood 14 times a week, 160 times behind the wheel. While you're working, candid cameras catch you 40 times, maybe more if you're in retail, travel, or high security industries, and 24 times a week while shopping or running errands. I mean, I don't like it, uh, but I don't know if it surprises me, but, uh, but yeah, not a great thing to know. Jay Stanley is a senior policy analyst with the ACLU. We're seeing a very rapid increase in the amount of public cameras that Americans were subject to. Right now we have about 15 cameras for every 100 people in America, about 50 million cameras. Um, and that's more per capita than any other country in the world, even China. I mean, the basic concern is that we're gonna lose our privacy and we're gonna become a country that's different from what we've always been. That from the moment you step out of your front door until you return home at night, every moment of your life in public will be recorded um, potentially scrutinized, watched. He says it's often artificial intelligence keeping track, not humans. Computers that analyze your daily routines and that understand what you're doing, what you're carrying, what you're wearing, who you are, what your attributes are, and filing that away somewhere. You don't expect privacy on the street corner. So if a camera captures what you're doing in the street corner, I don't think that's an intrusion on privacy. UCLA law professor Eugene Volokh believes the positives outweigh the negatives makes it easier, for example, to catch criminals, maybe makes it easier to exonerate people who are falsely accused of crime, may also deter crime. While cameras have their problems, the question is compared to what? Compared to more aggressive police presence, the problems may be less. Both experts agree the biggest concern is the potential for government tracking its citizens under the guise of crime prevention. We're seeing some cities like Chicago putting police cameras all over the city and networking them together. They're also tying in private cameras. Um, in some cases, the ring cameras are being networked together by Amazon, which takes all the camera feeds and puts them in the cloud, um, potentially making them available to the authorities. Part of the solution, experts say, is private citizens asking themselves several questions before installing cameras on personal property. Do you trust the manufacturer who may store images on their own servers? Do you trust the internet? Because any cameras tied to the web are susceptible to being hacked. And do you trust the government that in many cases can use a warrant to access what your camera captures? But if you're really worried about that, I think the solution is to make it harder to abuse the cameras and not to, not to stop them altogether. Nobody's saying that you can stop technology from rolling forward, but you can put some constraints on it, shape how it's um, deployed so that it comports with our values. Stanley says that's where lawmakers should step in. He says they need to implement laws controlling access to these cameras, allowing us to benefit from this tech without becoming a surveillance society. In Washington, Eric Phillips, CBN News.